It's day three since the shocking allegations coming from the House Oversight and Accountability Committee regarding the Biden family's financial ties to foreign actors that likely stem from influence peddling for their own benefit. The Oversight Committee's probe details more than $10 million in payment to the Biden family and associates, as well as efforts that were made to conceal the sources of all that cash. And it's coming as no surprise that the FBI now is refusing to comply with a congressional subpoena. There are checks and balances, and there is oversight. Congress has a right to have uh, that knowledge, and I will have a conversation with uh, Director Ray about that and make sure that happens. That, of course, was House Speaker Kevin McCarthy, and it appears Republicans are not going to give up on this issue. They're not going to give up. But the question is, where does the investigation go from here? Well, joining me now to discuss this and more is Congressman Tim Burchett. He serves on three committees, including the Oversight and Accountability Committee and the Committee on Foreign Affairs. He represents the 2nd Congressional District of Tennessee. Congressman Burchett, welcome back to Washington Watch. Great to see you. Great. Great having me. Great, great to see you. I guess it's great. I don't know if it's great having me or not. Sorry. It's great <laughs> having you. Trust me, my friend. Good to have you. All right. Listen, these are serious <laughs> allegations that are coming out of the Oversight Committee. Tell us the latest. Well, you know Chairman Comer probably better than anybody, and he's a very serious man. You know, as you stated in your monologue, there's, there's over $10 million in funds that have flowed into the at least nine members of the of the Biden family, they received money directly from um, Chinese controlled entities into their accounts. They received a million dollars alone from a company controlled by some a Romanian in individual who's accused of corruption. And that was funneled through a Biden family associate to conceal the payment. You know, I don't know which is more infuriating that we've outlined this $10 million that we know of so far. And, and that I, I can assure you there is a lot more. Um, the, the, I don't know what's more infuriating, that or the fact that the FBI and the Justice Department has kind of turned a blind eye to this thing. You know, George Santos has been in Congress for, what, four or five months, and they've already got him indicted on 13 or 14 charges, federal charges. And this has been going on for years, and we can't even get them to look at it. And we're talking about $10 million. And the thing that you got to worry about is, what about our national security? Is this is it being threatened by this? You wonder why we didn't shoot down a Chinese balloon. We let it transverse the entire country. And then, um, you know, and you're kind of trying to figure out what did what did Hunter Biden, uh, uh, what did these foreign countries get for this uh, so-called investment in Hunter Biden? And, uh, you know, and what did they expect in return? So we've got a lot of questions to ask. And, um you know, and with the Justice Department hiding on this thing, it's 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 pretty clear that the cover up will continue. Yeah. And that's that's part of the, the disturbing uh, portion. I mean, we continue, it seems, week after week after week to watch this two tiered system of justice unfold before our very eyes, as you just mentioned, between the difference between Santos right now and what's happening to the Bidens. And, you know, and I'm not going to get into Santos right or wrong, but the fact is they're, they're dealing with one and ignoring the other. What about all this? I, I was listening to Chairman Comer uh, discuss how these monies came in and they were moved around in what appears to be shell organizations, payments moved moving around, very difficult to follow and transact. But at the end of the day, there were no services provided, just money being moved around that ends up in the Biden's back pockets. Uh, can you tell us more about that? Yeah, there's tw over 20 companies that were look like they're just created to hide this stuff. Um, and, and as complicated as it is, it's is from what from people I've talked to that that investigate these type of things in the past and have investigated them successfully is that the um, that shows a lot of arrogance because they left a lot of things um, unhidden. It, whereas uh, the pre the vice president and he was the vice president at the time would say visit China or visit a country and take his son with him. And there was meetings organized with these corporations over there. And then you would see a ban uh, Biden family associate receive a large, a large check 
and then it would be disseminated among the the amount that that he received would be disseminated in in equal parts among the Biden family and their associates, and you could basically um, chase the money right back. I made the statement on on um on another station that I said that during um money mon- money laundering school at mob camp they must have been um, asleep because they were very careless and I think it shows a deal of arrogance with them too knowing that our federal authorities will not investigate them so it's um it's very frustrating but what do we do we cut off their funds we tell the FBI you know congress is the checkbook let's play hardball let's 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 deal in realities. And I think that's what well, we think, need to do. Yeah, I think that's exactly what needs to happen. And it appears to me, at least, from all these different shell corporations involved moving money around, that the, the whole effort there was to conceal the source. Uh, do you agree with that? 100 percent. 100 percent. That That's the only reason to do that. And um, and they did it. And, and we so know they did it. And Go ahead, finish finish up. No, no, I was just going to say we know they did it, and now we're trying to figure out exactly what they got in return for it. Okay, we've only got a little bit over a minute left here, and I know you you're on a tight schedule, uh, but we we have the subpoena for the FBI for, to the FBI for the the uh, documents. They're pushing back on that, not uh, uh, giving it. What's next for this investigation? Where does it go from here when the FBI is not complying and there's still work to be done? I think we draw up legislation and force their hand and, in fact, start cutting some of their funding off. That's what we'll have to do. Well, do you think the FBI will eventually come around? I mean, are they going to are they required to uh, respond to the subpoena? Well, they yeah, they actually are. I mean, they are the Federal Bureau of Investigation and currently they're the uh, Federal Bureau of Cheerleading of Criminal Activity. And I think it starts at the top. I think they need to clean house is what I really do. I think it's going to end up having to happen because so much is going to be disclosed um, that was covered up in all this. And then you get back to the laptop story where um, you know, it's close to 50 intelligence folks basically said it did not happen. It was Russian intelligence. It just shows how deep this goes. Congressman, we're going to have to leave it there. I'm sorry. We're out of time. No, Congressman great. Tim Burchett.